Good morning. Grab a few minutes and let people join in here. When you pop on, make sure to say hello. You're here. Sometimes comments don't work on my live for some reason, but see you on there. I'll say hi. Good morning, Carlotta. We haven't um, really talked about it much on um, online or shown any pictures or anything, but I'm in JJ's new studio. It's done. Very excited. Um, very excited. I'm very excited. Yeah. I've paint like not in the living room. That's cool. <laughs> so he's just um, setting up everything now, making sure it's all good to go, putting in shelving, all that kind of stuff. So we're very excited about that. Anyway, I hope you're doing well. Let me know if you can hear me okay, too. Facebook is acting really, really strange here. You can? Okay. Can you hear music? I have some on, but I don't have it up loud because um, I'm not convinced it's royalty free, so I didn't want to get us flagged or anything. Um, so this week we've been talking about, um, spiritual warfare. Uh, this has been seek week. Um, pastor Booker always, um, leads us out into a week of prayer and worship and fasting about once every quarter. And sometimes there's like a theme or a topic um, that we're kind of all focusing on as, as the body. Sometimes there's not, but this time there was, and it was on spiritual warfare, which is very timely. Um, so many people have so many different things going on right now um, in their circles. And that's something that always happens, right? That, that there will always be problems or situations that arise but it's really important that we as Christians do our part to learn how to handle them properly. Good morning, Misty. I miss you. Thanks for joining us. I guess you follow Covenant. That's awesome. Um, so this morning, um, we're going to do a time of prayer. And I'm wrapping up um, this week's Seek Week. Every morning this week at 6.30, someone has been on here, and um, it's been fantastic. It really has. I have some things written down. So Pastor Booker started off the week by asking us a question. He said, do you feel like you're in a season where it is one attack right after another, one spiritual attack right after another? Are you in a season like that? Um, and I've been thinking about that question all week long. I've had it at the, the top of my notes here that I've kept up with. And yeah, I mean, for sure, it has felt like a season for me since January, uh, where it's just been, it's just been one thing after another, whether it's been in my personal life or, or the life of my friends. And sometimes that those seasons like that can feel very frustrating. So this was a timely week for me. Um, so on day one, we talked about how to identify um, whether you are in spiritual warfare or not. Deirdre, you're at the hospital again. Oh man, I'm so sorry. We're gonna, we're gonna be praying for you. I'm at BRMC with Josiah. We're, we've been here all night. They're about to transfer him to Knoxville for a workup. Okay, we right now we just. We just proclaim healing over Josiah right now. This has gone on far too, far too long. And we just stand firm in knowing that this boy will be healed. 
before you even get there. Complete healing and freedom from whatever this is. Amen. So on day one, we talked about how to identify uh, spiritual warfare and how, how to know where it's going on. You can't, you can't know how to fight anything or how to go through anything without being able to identify what it is. Day two, we kind of talked about what weapons to use and armor um, that we're to use. On day three, uh, we talked about how um, there is a vision and then comes the victory. Uh, day four, we talked about confidence. And on day five, we talked about focus. And so today I'm tasked with kind of wrapping that all up. And I was thinking that knowledge of, of all of those things are, are excellent and needed. Absolutely. But what do you do with that knowledge? You know, how do you, how do you get somewhere on a spiritual level with knowledge of what to do? It's our responsibility to take the knowledge and to take the things that we learn and from the word or things that we glean from other people, from pastors, from wherever we're at and actually make them applicable in our life. How do we ensure that we're on the right side of spiritual warfare? How do we ensure that we have the right mindset to kind of have the presence of mind to immediately know, hey, this is spiritual warfare. I need to stand firm in where I am. How, how do you do all of that? I heard a pastor preach a message one time on increasing spiritual capacity. And I think that's the answer. I think the answer is to always be pressing in. Always be looking for ways to grow and mature and cling to the word and cling to Christ. I'm in this class right now. It's, it's all just so timely, of course, because that's how God works. The class I'm in is called Spiritual Formation and Discipleship. And um, it is a doozy. <laughs> it, it, there's a lot of work to it, but um, it's been so enjoyable because it's all spiritual work. And for a while, I didn't understand, like, why is this a 300 level class? Like, this is, this is something that, like, freshmen should take. But it's really, it's really intense. Um, and it's making sure that man, okay, for me, for example, you're spending all of these, th this time, all of these resources in college, but are they just going to be knowledge for you? Is the words that you're learning from the Bible in these classes just going to be knowledge for you? Because if it is, that really does no good. So I have one of my books, um, shares this story about um, having all of the knowledge and how having all of the knowledge won't really get you anywhere. It's from the perspective of this pastor who goes through this season where he kind of has a mental breakdown. And um, this is his words of self-discovery of what he was doing. So I thought I would share them this morning um, because I feel like if we're just acting in like the way that the world thinks we should, and we just have the knowledge and we're just doing traditions and we're just reading the Bible because we're supposed to, we're just saying a prayer so we can check it off of a list. Then we're really doing a disservice to Christ. And we'll never, never be able to increase our spiritual capacity that way. We'll never be able to adequately participate in spiritual warfare that way. Um, so this says my father was an inveterate teacher. He had taught me almost everything there was to know about how to lead a church. So words came easily to me from the earliest days. So did my social skills. I knew how to engage with people, think quickly on my feet, see issues and problems from the biggest possible perspective. By nature, I was an idea man, a visionary of sorts. I possessed an ability to persuade people to follow. You can call all... You call all of these things, or at least I do, natural gifts or talents. They come in the course of life to some through our temperaments, our life experiences, and the influence of family and close friends. To a considerable extent, they were almost all the natural gifts I needed to get a very fast start in pastoral ministry. Good morning, Tina. I'm reading a reflection from a pastor who realized that he was... Um, not really doing the things that he was supposed to do. And he was relying on his natural man to pastor a church. 
In addition to the natural giftedness I've mentioned, there were some other very practical reasons why this fast start happened. For example, I had a remarkable, mature, and insightful wife who put every bit of muscle, both spiritual and otherwise, she had into my ministry and saved me from a thousand errors of judgment. Then, too, my predecessor had some serious leadership mistakes, and that meant that almost everything I did, by contrast, the congregation viewed with favor and affection. Humanly speaking, the future looked extremely bright, and even those who had tracked my life during my school days and had sometimes worried about whether I would amount to anything were beginning to think that I might be on to something special in the future. If ministry was all about natural talent, timely opportunities, and great assistance from those who loved you, I was on my way. Natural gifts. We all have them. I suppose some of us having more than others. Then they carry young men and young women for a long distance, and they certainly carried me. Natural gifts such as personal charisma, mental brightness, emotional strength, organizational ability can impress and can motivate for a long time. Sometimes they can be mistaken for spiritual vitality and depth. Sadly, we do not have a Christian culture today that easily discriminates between a person of spiritual depth and a person of raw talent. Like the wheat and the tares of Jesus' parable, they can be difficult to distinguish. The result is that more than a few people can be fooled into thinking they are being influenced by a spiritual giant when in fact they were being manipulated by a dwarf. We must always be aware that there are leaders who can build great organizations, including churches, on natural gifts. Say the right words be smart enough to do the right things, be insightful enough to connect with the right people, and one can go a long way before anyone ever discovers that their inner life was close to empty. Wow. That, that just makes me want to weep. May I never be that. May I never be operating on just my natural giftings. May I always operate on the spiritual things in life. I'm so thankful for um, being under and shepherded by him and being under a pastor who, who has a very large tank of spiritual capacity. And this is not him, but it was so eye-opening to read that this week because when I read it, you know what my thoughts were? How could one get through a chaotic time? How could one get through a a season of crisis without walking in their spiritual man instead of their natural man. Like that passage said, you can have a, a, a lot, a, a lot of natural gifts and they may take you further than the normal person, but there's a point in which they will no longer be sufficient for the things that you're going through. I hope that blessed you as much as it did me. Um, I believe that at some point, the demand of your spiritual life, our spiritual life, comes to a place where we must make a decision whether to increase capacity or just stay stagnant where we are. We can't be satisfied, though, with staying where we are in our relationship with God right now. Like it can't just get to a place where this is good enough. Like we always have to be searching and pushing in for the more. Sometimes we just stop. So why, why, why? If, if that's you, if you've stopped pursuing the Lord, if you've stopped pressing in and trying to learn more about him and, and grow in him, why? Why have you stopped? I mean, we've all been in that place at, at one point or time in our lives. Do you feel like you have found out all there is to know about God? Do you feel like you've, I've been in church my whole life. I know everything there is to know in the Bible. I mean, that could be true. But knowing what's in the Bible and having a relationship with the Lord are two totally different things. They're night and day. Why have you stopped? pressing in? Is it because you feel like a failure? I think some of us do often or sometimes. That sermon that I was talking to you about that I watched was um, on Luke 
Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. It's where Jesus runs into the fishermen. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit longer today, but we're just going to go to church. <laughs> Luke chapter 5. One day, as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to cast to catch some fish. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. Now, this is really important because the back history of this, this is why we need context, is where they were in Capernaum, you, you didn't go fishing during the day there. All the fishing was done at night. These were professional fishermen. They knew how to fish. They knew what lures to use, what nets to use. They knew what areas to go to. They knew how to do all of the things, but they were failing at doing all of the things. And so here comes Jesus. It's like, hey, let's go out in the middle of the daytime and put down your nets. They're like, brah, <laughs> we've been fishing all night. We know what we're doing. We didn't catch anything. So he says that, but then he also does say, but if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. And this time their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat, and soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, Oh Lord, please leave me. I'm such a sinful man. For he was all struck by the number of fish they had caught, as were the others with him. His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. And Jesus replied to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for men. And as soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. How many times have we been in a situation like that, where we're just failing and God's trying to teach us something? He's trying to throw us a, a net ourselves, you know, and, and we're just like, no, that's not how it's done. Like, I'm just going to keep pounding my head on the wall right here because I know what I'm doing. Is that where, is that why you've stopped? We have to increase our spiritual capacity. Do you see here that Jesus picked three failures to come talk to? He didn't pick three people that had it all together. He didn't pick three people that were um, just perfect and had no struggles. He went to three failures. Why did he go to three failures? Because they had room to increase their spiritual capacity, right? They had room to increase their spiritual capacity. So the question today in our church, are we letting Jesus in the boat? Are, are, are you letting him in, in your boat for life? Is your church letting Jesus in the boat? Or are we just continuing to go back and forth doing the same things and, and not really getting anywhere? Are we staying in these cycles where it's just like times of good, then failure, times of good, then failure. And we never kind of get out. Is Jesus in your boat? Jesus isn't afraid of your failure. He got into the boat with these guys willingly and then was willing to teach from it. He's not afraid of your failure. Number two, are we willing to learn? Are we willing to go against what we think we know? Are we allowing God to have these moments where he can transform our mind and our current level of knowledge? Are we going to let him take us up to the next level that he has for us? We have to stop thinking that we know it all because we don't want, we don't know it all. So this story made me think, I have a few questions jotted down here and then I promise we'll pray. What does God want me to say or do through me, but doesn't because I don't have the capacity. That's what that, that's what the preacher in the sermon asked. What does God want to say to me or do through me, but doesn't because I don't have the capacity. God wants to expand our minds and thinking so that he can help us in spiritual warfare. 
he does. Failure is not final. Let Jesus in the boat and be teachable. I believe if we remember these three things, we can be on our way to increasing spiritual capacity, thereby being able to take the things that we earned earlier, learned earlier this week about spiritual warfare, apply them, and be successful with Christ at the front, with him leading the way. Then we can take all of these things. We can take the weapons, the spiritual weapons. We can put on the armor of God. We can realize that we might have a vision, but we have to have the victory. We can walk in confidence. We can focus on the Lord. If we're doing this, if we remember that failure is not final, if we remember that Jesus needs to be in our boat, and if we remember that we need to be teachable and allow him to work on us, if you, if you follow me at all, if you listen to me at all, you'll know that there's this thing that I say all the time, and I've been praying this prayer since 2017. Lord, reveal the truth in my life. Lord, reveal the truth in my life. How am I getting in your way? How am I getting in my own way? Reveal the truth in my life. Show me how I need to grow. Show me how I need to improve. Show me anything, and let's handle it. So we're going we're gonna to pray, but before we do, I just want to call, call to action here. Don't let this week close out in vain. We had a phenomenal um, worship night Wednesday night. Church tomorrow is going to be great. Don't let everything that we've learned this week go in vain. Don't just be like that pastor that I, I read that story to you about, where he had all the knowledge in the world, but at the end of the day, like, fell apart fell apart. Don't be that. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for a wonderful week. Thank you for the vision that came for us to even begin these seek weeks a couple of years ago. Lord, thank you for speaking through them to us. I thank you right now for coming into the lives of of the people at Covenant Fellowship specifically and tearing down these strongholds, tearing down anything that has to do with disunity. Lord, I thank you in advance for the victory in this area. You've given our pastor a vision of where we're going, of how we are going to Help you rescue Bristol. Lord, we know that that victory is in sight. We know that you've given him the vision. And right now we're asking you to reveal the truth in our lives. Lord, show us where the planks are in our own eyes. Show us where we need to forgive Show us where we need a heart of repentance. Lord, show us where we need to improve. Show us where we're carrying things naturally and we don't even know it. We think that we're doing it right. We think that we're doing it spiritually, but we're really carrying it with our natural man. Show us, reveal the truth in our lives. Lord, may our heart be as one. Mend any broken anything that is preventing us from walking in unity in this season and in every season to come. May we be able to spiritually identify issues the moment they come up. Squash them out. Talk them out. Walk forward with love leading Lord, I know that there is a large task ahead of us. And I can't help but feel like we're on the precipice of it. Because I feel like the enemy is throwing everything that he's got. Like rapid fire because we're so close. 
Lord, just help us. Help us do our work. Help us put in the work that we need to, to be strong soldiers in the army of the Lord. Do not trip up over anything trivial and meaningless that ends up ruining it. Lord, we want to be used. Lord, help us increase our spiritual capacity. Lord, coat us in the anointing of your oil, Lord, that makes us just want to press in and learn more. Lord, may you be the first thing on our minds every morning when we wake up. Father, we praise you today. You're so worthy. Lord, we thank you for everything that you have given us. Lord, we thank you for the mission and the vision that you've entrusted us with. Lord, thank you for somehow seeing us worthy enough for your only son to die on the cross in our place. Lord, we honor you. And we want to honor you in everything we do. And we need your help. We need your guidance. Lord, burn this week into all of our minds. May we not forget the lessons that we've learned. And may we come out of this week ready to go forward. Ready to hear your voice. Ready to hear your instruction ready to hear the Holy Spirit in moments. Lord, may we see something, pause, think, pray, and then respond. Increase our wisdom tenfold across the entire community. Your word said that if, if we ask for wisdom, you would never withhold it from us. But we're coming to you today asking for wisdom. Asking for wisdom as a body and asking for wisdom in our own personal life. Lord, for those in our congregation right now that are just going through it, Lord, I ask for a special, special extra dose of strength peace, courage. For all those who are ill, Lord, I ask for full healing in this very moment. And there's so many, I don't want to forget any names, but the, the one that's coming to me right now is the Heflin family, the boys, Lord. Restore their bodies to the way that you intended them to operate in Jesus' name. We ask for a breakthrough in this family. Whatever it needs to be, Lord, bring full health to these boys. Give strength and peace to their mother and father. Help them endure this battle. They know it's just a season of pruning and stretching and growing and that they're going to be elevated to their next spiritual level. But right now we ask for healing. Lord, I, I ask for you to not forget us when it comes to our vision of having a bigger building. We desperately need the space. Even with the additional building that we are leasing now, we're, we're out of room. Guide and direct our pastor and our board. Lord, give them the, the wisdom that they need to see where you want us to go. Lord, help us in every way to remember that spiritual warfare is real. It's hard, but we are not alone in it. And that you've given us all the tools necessary to get through it. We love you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, I hope you have an amazing weekend. I hope that wherever you are, church services tomorrow are phenomenal and that the Lord really speaks to you. 
Most importantly, I hope that you leave here this week after the Seek Week on Spiritual Warfare knowing, knowing that we need to increase our spiritual capacity and keep pressing in. Keep pressing into the more, the more. God has so much more for you, friend. I love you. See you at church tomorrow at 10.